Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, we have Kirk Lowe joining us from Canada and he's from a business called Proud Mouth and he is 100% an expert on podcasting. He would say he goes really deep on podcasting. And our title for today is how to use podcasts to amplify your message as a financial advisor. <laughs> Hi, Kirk. How you doing? Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Paul. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm a big fan of uh, of your work and your and mostly your your influence, like your thought leadership and the stuff you're sharing. So, uh, thanks for having me. No, not at all. Not at all. Could you tell us a little bit about? I mean, Proud Mouth is a very unusual name for a company. I think you went hmm. through some rebranding recently. I think you were you were telling me that. Can you tell me a little bit about Proud Mouth and sort of you know your own background and how you got into it and and sort of you know uh, uh, you know maybe the challenges of growing that business too. Yeah. So I, I've been in financial marketing for over 20 years mm -hmm. um, and doing a lot of branding and marketing. And um, to be honest, struggled getting, having advisors or our clients create authentic content so that they could really do better at content marketing, which mm -hmm. as Seth Godin said in 2008, content marketing is the only marketing left. That was 2008. We're in 2021 yeah. now. So, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, I understand the financial industry lags a bit, um, but it was a real struggle to get advisors to continuously write or consistently write uh, blog posts or white papers or do video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, I met my business partner about four and a half years ago. And I think 2016, by 2017, we had started our own podcast and mm -hmm. quickly each of us had epiphanies that podcasting was something that we thought any expert, not just financial professionals, any expert could do on a consistent basis with a lot more ease, provided that we did all the technical stuff for them. Mm -hmm. So we, we knew that if they had to do the technical stuff, it would be actually more difficult than a blog. Mm -hmm. But the act of actually coming to a microphone, having a bit of an outline and talking, which everybody's quite comfortable with, and the fact that from a compliance perspective, it's not live, so you could create a transcript and and um, and have that approved, mm -hmm. which rarely ever get, we have to edit anything out, yeah. um, was, was uh, I thought, maybe the greatest marketing tool potentially for advisors to be content marketers. If you don't want to be a content mm -hmm. marketer, whatever, like, you don't, you know, this isn't <laughs> going to get you excited. But if you're trying to be a content marketer, you care about, you know, the value in becoming a subject matter authority, not the expert, the authority. That's a, another step, right? Um, that this could be an incredible medium for that. So the struggle for any business is being heard. Mm -hmm. And and there's channels and mechanisms that are, I don't, I don't know if crowded is necessarily the right, they're crowded, but you can still stand out, but you got to work harder and harder to stand out. A podcast helps you stand out, um, but as far as podcasts goes, they're not even close to saturated, even though I do hear that from time to time. Oh, everybody's doing a podcast. I'm like, you know, financial, in the financial services, nobody's doing pod. Even podcasting in general, there, there are approximately 1.7 million podcasts in play, and there are over 500 million uh, blogs, not blog mm -hmm. posts, but blogs. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're not even close, right? Our, our title for the talk today is how to use podcasts to amplify their message as a financial advisor. And we work with a lot of advisors. And in my experience, financial advisors have little or no knowledge of podcasting and, and are very few of them are, are actually involved in it actively, you know, in a, in a way to promote and develop their message or to put things out there. But you know, right. how did you end up going so deep into podcasting? You were obviously a marketer, you, you know, you were doing different things and websites and marketing and content marketing. How did, how did podcasting become your thing? We started realizing early on how we could not only, it was, uh, it was a great platform to not only articulate your expertise, but to mm -hmm. do it with some, uh, a level of authenticity and personality that was really difficult. It was mm -hmm. easy to be comfortable doing it. And I think that's a very difficult thing for a lot of people to achieve in marketing. When you're writing, mm -hmm. you have to be a really good writer. You can be an okay podcaster and accomplish that, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So um, the other thing is that when people consume podcasts, you more likely to have their attention because they're doing it while they're commuting. They're not, um, 
they're not in the middle of the day. I mean, I guess you could say that's when they might be reading blog posts and stuff too, but it was easy to create a more intimate um, engagement with people. Mm-hmm. And it was on their terms. So you're mm-hmm. more likely to have people like you because you didn't make them give them your email address or your firstborn so that you could download a paper, right? <laughs> yeah. They can do it. It's anonymous, mm-hmm. uh, which does, which is a slight struggle for people to overcome. It's, it's, it's um, an obstacle to get over that because mm-hmm. the value of the intimacy and the anonymity early on actually creates more engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole, the, the, the big plan of what you want to do is turn skeptics into fans. Right. So if people, when anybody is first introduced to whether you're a financial advisor or, or a company or a lawyer or an accountant, um, a, a health care specialist, mm-hmm. you got to, you got to earn that credibility and mm-hmm. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but scaling your credibility is one of the most powerful things about podcasting. Mm, in- interesting. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that now, now in a couple of minutes. Can you give me maybe an idea? Because you've obviously grown a business. You, as you said, have been involved in financial advisor marketing and so on for 20 odd, odd years. What were the challenges of growing, growing your business? What did you kind of struggle with? What did you have to really work at? I think, you know, the, that, that intimacy was a big problem because there's so many people that talk about marketing just like there's so many people that talk about financial planning or legal advice and, and all these subjects. I mean, there's a lot of content out there Mm -hmm. and this just seemed to be able to get past it. It it was a, we were able to create some kind of a bit of personality Mm -hmm. um, to what we were doing and we could go into more depth. I think um, most people listen to an entire podcast, Mm -hmm. which is crazy if we had stats on how many people actually read an entire article, what do you think the stats mm. would be? <laughs> Maybe not. 25%. <laughs> if even. Yeah. 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 Well, um, podcasting is over 75%. Wow. It's, yeah. 90. Um, it's, I think it's 80% of, yeah. So it's either 80% of people listen to 75% or more. Those are usually our stats. That's the average. We're 75. So 75 of the people listen to 75% or more. So, I mean, the numbers are fabulous and, um, that's a, that's a big deal, I think. And, and market and, uh, advertisers are in absolute love with podcasting, the intimacy Mm -hmm. and the results that people are getting from sponsoring podcasts or having ads run during podcasts. Now, one of my favorite podcasts right now is smartless. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's run by uh, some comedians. Um, so, uh, Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and, uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting the third one. Anyway, it's a wonderful, um, podcast, but they do their own commercials Mm -hmm. and I guarantee you they're selling stuff like crazy, whatever, whatever it is, mattresses, uh, Viagra, whatever. It's not Viagra, but they have something like that. Anyway, (laughs) they're, they're selling these things and they're running the commercials. So the intimacy Mm -hmm. for advertisers and for, uh, the podcaster is incredible. I've listened a bit to Tim Ferriss. I have to admit, he's obviously a very popular podcast in the yes. world. Some of his podcasts are two and a half hours long. Like you're talking about a meaty podcast. And in fairness, I have listened to the lot, not necessarily in one sitting, but I'll generally finish the podcast, you know, even if it is two and a half hours long. So yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm guilty as charged. Well, the, the, that guy, and the more and more you realize you, everybody's got lots of stories. And you don't realize sometimes how valuable some of the things you've been through. I think if you only talk about financial planning, if you're a financial advisor, you only talk about financial planning, you're limiting your experiences Mm. that your listener can enjoy from you. That Mm. may tee up your next question. Well, I I do have a question about that. So um, is it possible to get a lot of listens every month by podcasting about life and not money? I've heard you talk about this previously, and I, I think it was to do with a previous client of yours, but obviously financial advisors tend to talk a lot about money or financial products or, yeah. you know, ma- managing your retirement and, and all that type of stuff, which in general are not very sexy subjects, let's be honest, you know, mm-hmm. but so is it possible to do that and talking about life when you're an advisor? Yeah, I, I think the best podcasters on in any, any, you know, vertical expertise, right? So any, any, any expertise or category who can talk about, who can weave life business and their um, expertise into the same podcast are ultimately going to be the most enjoyable and the most successful. Mm -hmm. But 
um, we have nine different evolutions of a podcast or different formats. And right. we coach over time. In the first three years, um, we spend a lot of time. And obviously, we're, our company is only about three and a half years old. So we're mm -hmm. just getting to some of this stuff. We're working but, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We take a lot of, <laughs> we, we've thought out, you know, what are the formats? When should they introduce them? Sometimes it's just getting comfortable. Like we have a, a gentleman, our first podcaster actually, and he's in uh, New York and he's a, uh, was a former uh, accountant uh, turned into a financial advisor. So that typically means that other CPAs will like you and trust you right? mm -hmm. because you were, you were one of them. Right. And they, and they understand what you had to go through to get there. So what his format was, was bringing on centers of influence mm -hmm. and, the good part about that is that he built incredible relationships. He, he inspired those people. He made mm -hmm. them feel good. They felt like he was helping them with their business because he reached out and said, hey, why don't you be on my podcast? Gave them some content marketing, which they never, it was a big deal. Yeah. And it took a while, took about 18 months. But when he had the 18 to 30 months, uh, he brought in uh, uh, 30 million in assets. Uh, this is documented um, from mm -hmm. him. And um, that was a, that was a big deal for him, right? That yeah. was a, it, it was a bit of a struggle from a mindset and expectation perspective, because mm -hmm. there's another big problem that we have, um, as business people is we expect marketing to work really quick. Uh, <laughs> the best <Yeah>. marketing <laughs> actually takes longer to work, but when it, when it gets going, that's when you really hit it. It doesn't mean you stop and you rest, but, um, that's why subject matter authority or becoming an influencer or just pursuing the influence path is so powerful because when you do it long enough, people know who you are and that's when you hit it. But it right. takes some, for some people, it can be 18 months. Some people it might not be three years. Ask people who didn't have somebody help them accelerate. They might tell you 10 years. Can you imagine <laughs> spending 10 years before you really hit it? So on that then, so how do you turn someone into the subject matter authority they are meant to be. And I, I see it with advisors. They're generally super well qualified in terms of their financial qualifications. They spent years and years really getting up there. So absolutely they're a subject matter authority, but how do you, yeah. how do you actually turn that into, you know, a, a, a marketing machine, you know, the influencer that they want to be? Yeah. I'll actually, what I should do is I'll talk about what problem mouth, what we do, because mm. the strategy that we do is one that you can employ on your own. It's not, okay. it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is for us, this is the path to accelerating influences. You got to think about these five things. Mm -hmm. So the first one is you've got to produce a professional. When I say professional, what you and I are doing right here, if we just cut out the audio, this is, this works for a podcast. Yeah. It doesn't have to be any fancier than what we're doing right now audio version. And for you, you're, you're creating video out of it too, which is yeah. a good idea, but I won't get into that right now. So <laughs> producing a good po podcast, having the, a nice, good name, mm -hmm. um, having the right graphics, having a channel, um, mm -hmm. with the right features and functionality and reporting, things like that. We use blueberry, um, for mm -hmm. that. And blueberry allows you to integrate, especially if you have a WordPress website, there's good integrations and blueberry is amazing for that. Mm -hmm. So producing a good podcast, editing it um, is really important. The next part is publishing it. So publishing it, I guess, means publishing it on a good uh, community or host. But mm -hmm. publishing on your website um, is another one. Publishing on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Publishing, like finding other places to publish, like we publish on medium.com for our clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and we've got some other partners that we do as well. So finding places where you can get your podcast published is important. And then making sure that you syndicate it to all the big podcast communities like iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, SoundCloud, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, iHeartRadio. So that um, that's the publishing side is really important. The next one is uh, multiplication. This may be the most important and the thing that's the most difficult for people to do. Right. That's where you, uh, for us, we, we create a transcript and we actually scrub, we review it. We have people who just review transcripts. Um, mm -hmm. for us all day. And what they do is they pick out key talking points. And then we take the, we take the key talking point and we create a, uh, an audio clip. Mm -hmm. And then we turn, we take a even smaller part of that audio clip and we turn it into a quote meme. 
So the graphics and both of them have beautiful graphics with them. And then we actually take the summary of the podcast, turn it to a text motion video. So multiplying the content and there's other things you can do with it, but, uh, and we also turn the entire audio into a YouTube, um, like a video for YouTube, obviously it's a static image cause we aren't recording, but we are working on trying to figure out how to add video. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is really important for multiplying your content and then creating the social copy that gives it context. You'll see a lot of people say, I just did a podcast episode, check it out. That's not good enough for social media. People need right. to know, well, what am I going to learn? What am I, what is it about? What, what's the win for me? Why so should I social care? Context is, Why should I care? I think is yes. what it comes down to. Isn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. And as a social media guru yourself, you understand that making it as easy for people to understand what they're getting into is the most important thing. Yeah. And the neat thing is, is you, there's so much credibility just from having that post. People mm-hmm. don't actually have to click on it. People mm-hmm. sometimes get worried about clicks. No, the awareness of how professional you look, that, that you have a podcast, that you're pushing out this stuff, you're mm-hmm. separating yourself from the crowd every day, right. every impression. Mm-hmm. So whether or not they're engaging, engagement's good, but sometimes people get too caught up in engagement because some, some types of clients aren't social engagers, but they're paying right. attention, right? Mm-hmm. So the next part is um, sharing. So you've got to take that content you create and share it on a consistent basis. Um, I recommend um, doing, you know, sharing something every day if you can, something mm-hmm. professional, and then insert like personal stuff from time to time, uh, milestones mm-hmm. in your business, things happening in the world that come, um, you know, whatever's relative to your clients. And then the last one is um, boosting it. So how do you get more awareness, more engagement? Can you run ads in Facebook? Can you put push your podcast out to uh, can you hire somebody uh, um, like a PR firm to help you get more exposure? Can you do, and then there's just doing the organic stuff yourself, like talking about it all the time. Uh, the organic stuff, actually probably the most important, um, which is, do you if make your podcast an important part of your business and, and, and make everybody that you know, feel included, right. right? So talk about it, ask them what they want. You know, how did you like that episode? Is there a guest you think that has incredible stories you know, that should be on my show, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, and I, I think you break it down and you make it nice and simple for people. Now, my impression, you can correct me if I'm wrong. My impression is that for 98% of advisors, they'd possibly be overwhelmed with the concept of even thinking about putting together a podcast or even thinking about amplifying mm-hmm. or cutting down the bits of, bits of content and, and so on. So with people who are kind of in that, mm, this is a little bit too hard kind of camp, what, what would you say to them? Well, too hard doesn't mean you should not do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, there's a reason why financial advice, why, why most investors should be working with a financial advisor because financial advisors taking a lot of time to learn their craft. Right. And just because you maybe don't have the skill sets internally and don't want to hire them to do it, there's 11 skill sets that we take like distinct skill sets that we have in our company to fulfill what I just went through those five things. Mm -hmm. So do you want to have those 11 skill sets in your higher than many offers? Probably not. So Mm -hmm. outsourcing is probably a really good idea. Having said that, if you just want to get started, you can just start your own podcast, just Mm -hmm. get a decent microphone. Yeah. You know, have a boom arm, a filter and, you know, create an outline actually we have a ton of resources to teach people how to do that with in our Mm -hmm. uh, influence accelerator academy yeah and uh, people want to go there there's actually a free version and then we have a ton of workshops uh, courses documentation um, office hours to answer questions all kinds of neat things you get more if you pay but there's a free version there's some neat resources there too but that's you know start decide what you need to do to be consistent if you can't be consistent with it uh, don't, don't start or, mm-hmm. or outsource, but even outsourcing, you got to make sure you got the time to do it. It takes about one to two hours to prepare and record an episode. Mm-hmm. If you're hiring somebody like us, otherwise you're looking at about 20 to 40 hours per episode to do all the stuff we talk about. Wow. And, and so just on that, I mean, I'm sure people do this and do it badly. Yeah. So, so what's on the, what not to do list? You know, how do you not trip over your shoes? I mean, the obvious answer is to, is to outsource it. But if I am kind of determined to do it myself and you know, what, what do I need to be careful of? I don't monologue. 
um, there, it's very difficult to, to be a solo, to have a solo cast, right? Mm -hmm. Just you, mm -hmm. um, the play between each other, the fact that you and I are watching each other right now, uh, mm -hmm. through zoom and, uh, is, is really engaging and important mm -hmm. and it keeps the listener interested. So if I go on too long, you know, you can keep nodding your head. I'll eventually stop talking <laughs> eventually. Um, so that's a really important part. Um, Another one is to make sure that the sound quality is, is good. So you want to get a good enough, you want to get good enough equipment that, mm -hmm. that, um, works for you. Yeah. Yeah. I got to turn, I got to turn my vitamin D light back on in the middle of winter here. Um, in Canada, so, yeah. Three yeah. hours of daylight. Is that what you have at the moment? Is it? No. <laughs> well, Northern way North I'm in, I'm in Toronto. So we're fairly, we're, we're fairly far South compared to other places in Canada. Anyway, <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, another one is don't script. Mm. If you've got like three or four key talking points and you want to make sure you nail them, mm -hmm. that's okay. Don't try to hide it that you're reading it though. If, if you need to, like, just, I'm going to read this. This is really important. Um, just be yourself. Um, mm -hmm. but don't script it. It ruins a podcast pretty quick. I think unless you're a storyteller and you're reading and then you're, you know how to, you know how to tell the story, even though you're reading, but that's, mm -hmm. that's a pretty tough skill to, to learn. Um, One thing I've kind of noticed uh, we, again with advisors, we, we often encourage them to do some, some video and they might have a lot of experience of, of being on camera and they, you know, they do their best and they jump on and they, they set up their, their video and they, they sort out their audio, but they tend to be very, stiff if you know what i mean on the video very kind of sort of sort of scripted you know you know kind of rabbit in the headlights and as you say kind of monotone and you know so when they delivered although the content they might be delivering might be really strong their actual the pitch you know or you know the, the way they deliver it doesn't really engage people is, is that something you come across a little bit of kind of stage fight with podcasts as well yeah i was mentioning our our first podcaster he was he was a little stiff when he got going mm-hmm Actually, the thing that we thought turned, helped him turn the corner was he had a guest on mm -hmm. that wasn't financial. It was a sports broadcaster in right. his, in, and he, he just was so passionate about it mm -hmm. and it just got him it's from there on. It seemed that that just like you know, something clicked for him. Right. So that's one of the neat things about not just feeling like you got to sit there and sound smart all the time. Mm -hmm. Like many of us have stories about our life, our business that people would really relate to. And you forget that just being yourself, that's what people can really relate to the most. It's mm -hmm. not what you know that they can relate mm -hmm. to. It's who you are, that they realize you've had the same experiences. You know, you got four kids at home, um, you know, all these neat things. So, I mean, if you're going on about your life, like everybody should care a lot, that's different. But if you <laughs> throw in stuff once in a while, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good thing. Now, I also understand, I think I've heard you say this before, that now is a great time for a financial advisor to actually start a podcast. And I've heard you kind of kind of say that. And why would you say that? Like, why is now a great time? And obviously, you know, you've been in this business for a number of years and podcasts can mm -hmm. really become become quite popular, but why now? And why for financial advisors? I probably got three or four answers here. I'll go quick. The first one is that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time okay. is now. Right. Podcasting is really like planting a tree. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some while to, to get branches and grow leaves mm -hmm. and look beautiful. And you have to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that tree and other people, the other people are growing their trees mm -hmm. and eventually more and more people have grown their trees. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a big one. Uh, during COVID, the two categories that had the biggest spikes were business. Mm -hmm. I can't forget the second. The only one that matters to me is the one I remember, of course. Of course. But business podcasts, which would include financial, mm -hmm. had the biggest spike in, in uh, listenership. Right. The other thing is that it's so unsaturated. Mm -hmm. And the other one is that, you know, if I go back to Seth Godin's quote, content marketing is the only marketing left. You cannot compete or you won't be able to for long. If you're buying content from other people, that's not yours. And if you can't show personality, mm -hmm. you can't show uh, your expertise and share it. And this may be the best way. It's, it's, 
video is really good, but I find videos best when it's shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, not beating up on what we're doing. Cause I really like it. There are people <laughs> who will want to watch, um, people talk and how they, you know, bounce back and forth. There's a lot of, mm-hmm. you know, visual stimulus happen in there, but I think you have to have multiple ways. And I think it can be good at podcasting pretty quick. Although I, I do love this format too. And this can easily be turned into a podcast. Didn't, didn't just need to be video, but YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So that's a good place to be. There you go. There we go. We do love mm-hmm. YouTube. We have to say, and we do love video. And but equally, yeah. I, I'm I'm learning as much about podcasting today as anybody else. I don't currently run a podcast. Yes, we like doing interviews. And we produce a lot of content and some audio. But I'm really interested to hear, you know, sort of your take on it. You you've obviously you're someone who really kind of understands it, which is uh, which yeah. is brilliant. The other thing that I see with advisors is a real fear of compliance and the compliance department and misstepping. Okay, and this comes up when they're writing articles, it comes up when they're putting together video or anything that relates to content they're putting out for their business. They're, depending on how experienced they are, they kind of fall into two camps. One camp is the, um, I do not do anything without discussing it with my compliance department and letting them dot the I's and cross the T's, okay? Mm -hmm. Or the other camp is, well, I'm running my business, I'm gonna get on with running my business, I will nod to the compliance department and keep them happy, but they're not gonna hold me back and I prefer to beg forgiveness than ask permission, essentially. Those are the two camps that I I tend to see, right? Mm -hmm. How, How do you, how do you square that circle from a compliance point of view with, with podcasting? I, I, I could foresee a whole host of, of challenges yes. around podcasting. Yes. From our perspective, we try to focus on what we can control and what we can control is keeping the most, um, the most compliant um, lad leading companies and mm-hmm. uh, compliance departments happy. Mm-hmm. So we not only transcribe every podcast, but we actually scrub the transcription for accuracy mm-hmm. because the bots, the, whatever you call them, transcription bots, I'll call them. They, they don't get everything right. Accents, you know, for me, me, for example, I probably, I'm pretty difficult to transcribe because I push words together or I stop. <laughs> it's a, I don't know. I'm from the Maritimes originally in Canada. So maybe that's, where I get that, but I'm an Irishman who talks too fast. So the transcribers struggle with me as well. So don't worry about it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, So it's, I mean, that's a really important piece. So, Mm -hmm. um, so so the other one is simple as that. Yeah. We document. Yeah. yeah, That's Mm -hmm. the most important. We document everything and we have it in our process to make sure that they have access to, we almost overwhelm them with our documentation. Mm -hmm which right. is not difficult to do if you're, you know, if you got the protocols and processes in place mm-hmm. and we do. So there are some companies with advisors with that second mentality you mentioned where they, they need to get stuff done yeah. and they kind of push forward. And then sometimes like six or 10 in, we realize that some of them aren't getting, but we were there um, at the table, but we do have a whole page on how compliance friendly we are. And mm-hmm. we've never had a, um, an issue. We've right. never had anybody get in trouble. So we're, we're very diligent about making sure everything's approved and all that kind of stuff. But you, the funny thing is, is a brochure is no different than a podcast. Right. And a compliance department who doesn't understand that and won't let you do it to me is a major problem for the decision right. you make to want to do business with them. We've got some, a couple of big ones right now who are saying yes and about to launch a lot of podcasts. And it's very exciting for us. We we see the momentum coming and there's other ones who are on the opposite. They, they started to let it and they're holding back and there's no yeah. reason. The biggest reason that a compliance department is holding back is not because of risk. It's because they do not want to review your podcast. They cannot yeah. afford it. Yeah. That is the only, and if, and if there's the risk of a podcast is negligible. Mm-hmm. There's not, there's no more risk than, than anything. It's probably less risk. Mm-hmm. Having said that, um, it's all about money. Mm-hmm. And so there, I remember one of the big, really big broker dealers, the advisor came back 
after he'd started, he got approval. Then he, then they started saying, Oh, geez, we don't have time to do this. Mm -hmm. or, or they didn't say we don't have time to do this. They said, we, yeah, actually they, they were honest with him. And I said, well, tell, ask them how much they are per hour to do it, pay them to, to do it. Mm -hmm. And it was actually reasonable, but, um, they ended up not wanting to do that. I guess they didn't want the administrative burden of trying to charge for doing work. <laughs> and so he ended up just doing a, a lifestyle podcast. So he didn't even have to push it through there, which nice. is working out well for him. Brilliant. So there are options, right? Mm -hmm. You can do it uh, doing business as, um, and by the way, proud mouth, which I, I didn't get to earlier. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I say it is that the reason we created that name is because we want to create a, a brand that people really fall in love with mm -hmm. and not just financial people. I think by okay. us, we've opened it up to, to any vertical or any company that has expertise and they want to share the expertise, scale that expertise or scale their credibility. And I know that when we have a thousand advisors, you know, a thousand accountants, a thousand attorneys, a thousand healthcare specialists, a thousand mm -hmm. small businesses, a thousand mm -hmm. software as a service, all doing podcasts, you know, a thousand authors, mm -hmm. you know, doing ser you know, there, whatever it happens to be that we can start helping these people hang out together. They can mm -hmm. be guests on each other's podcasts. I think we can create an incredible community. And if you didn't know, I think it was a couple months ago, Amazon bought a podcasting company. Oh, did they? Very There's good. some big players that understand how big and important podcasting is going to become. And we're just, we're just getting started. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons to get into this is get into it before I mean, there's many years before it ever be saturated, but start, you know, plant your tree sooner than later, even if it's just doing some on your own and getting comfortable with it. Excellent. And what's next for you, Kirk? I mean, I, I can see the big plan. The industry is absolutely moving. You've certainly done your rebrand. What are, what are the next big steps for you? I Nobody's ever asked me, and I'm going to just assume this is what you're asking is what, what do I see coming next? after mm -hmm. podcasts mm -hmm. well, well like i'm I, asking you that and i'm asking you where you're going your your yourself as kirk and as part of pride Mouth as well yeah so i the future we want to get so good at podcasting and we want to create a lot of influencers when i say influencers i don't mean seth godin's and gary vaynerchuk's necessarily i mean people like you and I who are becoming, but for them and their businesses, mm -hmm. and there's a lot, there's still room, lots of room for growth for both of us in our, in our, but we keep doing the right things. And if we keep expanding and getting better at our expertise and most important, delivering a lot of value mm -hmm. and being entertaining doesn't mean you're going to win opportunities, but being valuable is huge. Right. And if you can figure out how to be valuable, be, get better and better at delivering value and be great at, at, at imparting or sharing your wisdom mm -hmm. that can lead to um, a lot of opportunity to do even more. Um, so, and you can monetize your podcast. We are right now looking for a sponsor. We have two mm -hmm. podcasts. We have our top advisor marketing podcast for the financial mm -hmm. service industry. Mm -hmm. And then we have our be around lab podcast, which is for all businesses, experts, and um, anybody who's got expertise that they want to get out to the world. Yeah. And um, they're both uh, great podcasts. I think the Be Your Own Loud one is going to be a notch up just because we've learned so much and we're applying that learning. Mm -hmm. We have a little more, um, uh, it's not control, but we're pretty excited about that. Mm -hmm. Having said that, so that's where kind of where we're heading. And I want to, you know, um, kind of point the ship here. Um, mm -hmm. I want to keep increasing the value. I want to do so much for our clients that they would never think of not working with us or ever leaving mm -hmm. and want to talk about us all the time. I, I essentially, I want to be a cult brand and problem with, we actually hired a cult branding expert to create it. And nice. he's going to be in our Academy, which is a great segue because the Academy, the creating the community, I think is going to be the next thing mm -hmm. for, for, experts is, and, and it's not a new thing. There's so many people that have communities, particularly mm -hmm. in info marketing, social media around that. 
Mm -hmm. But I think in these other verticals, like financial legal, I think creating these communities where you offer just so much value, if you can figure out the value part, and then you can um, figure out how to package it all, which is what we've done with the Influence Accelerator Academy, that mm -hmm. becomes a really huge thing. Um, and I think communities are going to be the next thing that we do beyond podcasting, but we'll see what happens. We got to get good at it ourselves. And that's kind of what we do, right? We got good at podcasting while we mm -hmm. taught every bribery and podcast and we got good at boosting and multiplying. Now mm -hmm. we're getting really good at that. Now uh, the boosting stuff, we got to keep um, getting better at. There's lots of really neat things that we're learning and mm -hmm. I'm going to hopefully learn some stuff from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we work together, but th those are huge things. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much for sharing all that today. I think that's that's absolutely brilliant. I think any advisor who could kind of really start to lean into the podcasting thing, as you said, there's no doubt it's on an upward curve. It's just a question as to whether you're going to grab the bull by the horns and actually get stuck in and get your feet yes. wet or whether you're going to sit on the sideline and uh, kind of watch it uh, pass yeah. you uh, pass you but by, the, you know? Yeah, you know, the neat tie-in for you is that uh, LinkedIn is kind of like podcasting, even though there's a lot of people on LinkedIn, it's one of the most underutilized social platforms as far as sharing content, right? I read mm -hmm. like a year ago, maybe a little more than that, that only 0.2% of all people on LinkedIn contribute on a weekly or monthly basis. Sounds so about right, yeah. LinkedIn is an incredible opportunity. LinkedIn will be more powerful. One, if you know how to use it, how to leverage it, which is why people go hire you, Paul. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have content, and that's probably your biggest struggle or social media consultants biggest struggle is that if the if the client doesn't have enough content, um, particularly content that they can really own, it becomes mm -hmm. a you can still do great stuff, but uh, it just gives you that advantage. And so you know, both of us are necessary for experts in small businesses and even large bigger companies to figure out the pathway to, you know, creating a lot of fans and, and turning skeptics into fans. Absolutely. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And listen, if someone wants to get in touch with you, Kirk, what's the best thing? Look you up on LinkedIn or jump on the website. What's the best thing? We'll put links in the show notes, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter quite a bit. Um, so you can find me there, uh, Kirk Lowe, the bald guy. And then my business partner, Matt Halloran, uh, he's on both as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but proudmouth.com is the best place to go. You, you can learn about our Influence Academy. It's all over that website if you want to link there. And that's, you know, that brand for us um, was supposed to be a little bold. Um, I was showing you earlier, we got some, mm -hmm. we're putting our, our logo yeah, on, nice. on stuff and hand that out to our friends and everybody uh, seems to love um, being part of what we're creating. And that's, that's important, right? Um, actually, our Be Your Own Loud podcast our second or third episode is with a guy named Rob Howard mm -hmm. and Rob is called a brand rehab specialist. Mm -hmm. He's the brilliant person who helped us build this brand. And in our tagline, well, not our tagline, our purpose statement is to free the world's experts from sales. And when he came up with that, I, I, I mean, he was far away, but I was ready to give him a big hug because he just <laughs> up what we want to do for the next 20 years. There and um, it's exciting when you get there in your business, right? Branding yeah, is important. Yeah, clarity, I think. That's, that, that's the point of clarity right there, isn't it? Clarity. <laughs> and then having your passion, your focus, and feeling good about what you're doing every day. Mm. Yeah. It's the most important thing if you're going to run a business. Absolutely. Well, listen, Kirk, thank you so much for jumping on today. I really appreciate it and for, for all your, uh, your, your insights and, uh, and really wish you the best luck with the growth of, of Pride Mouth and, and everything to do with podcasting going forward. Yeah. yeah, you've got a great show. I appreciate all the questions. And I love being asked questions that don't always get asked. So thank you for that. I'm sure your, your viewers and listeners um, really appreciate that about paying attention to you. So thanks so much. And I can't wait to continue to get to know you and work with you. Excellent. Thanks, Kirk. Mm -hmm.